I'm going to speak a little bit about online platforms and data analysis and the oncoming, oncoming digitalization and shipping. I'm not a tech geek, but I do want technology and digitalization to assist me and the team uh, to manage the fleet more efficiently that we uh, trade around the world and, of course, more profitably. Um, big data is here with instant access to information and with the pressure on companies to become more efficient and to reduce costs. Um, so where was the first shipping, shipping uh, platform and chartering platform? One could argue that the, the most recent um, uh, was in 1744 at the old Baltic Exchange in London and uh, where people got together face to face and, and traded ships as owners, charters and brokers. Um, that was through pen and by word of mouth and our word, our bond. Until the uh, 1990s, not much had changed. Uh, the dot com boom came. Um, we had a company called Level Seas, which was set up by Cargill and Clarkson's in the early 2000s, where this was pushed into the market as an online chartering platform. Um, it basically, it didn't fly. Brokers didn't like it. it uh, we never got critical mass. I was at Cargill at the time. I was a test user. Um, it, it was a great idea, but it was just too early for the market. It, even in 2018, not much has changed. We still fix the same sort of ways. We've got computers, mobile telephones, Skype, WhatsApp, and of course, uh, even meeting up the odd time for uh, trying to organize a fixture. Um, some large trading companies now are changing this, uh, large charters. They're taking action on their own um, and have started in-house software systems uh, linked to the trading and commercial side of their business, the vessel operations, the risk management, bunker management, and FFAs uh, global, using global positioning systems and uh, tracking systems. Most of these platforms are purchased with specific customer um, add-ons such as specialized sh shipping software uh, companies such as uh, Softmar and Vesson um, or similar uh, entities. Uh, many shipping logistics companies around the world use these companies for their chartering and operations desks. In 2018, 15 years after Level C's, we now have a BHP Bulletin and a Tata Steel um, in Singapore and in Europe, um, having their online platforms where there's a bidding and auction process. Um, it's still relatively early days. It's very simple, simple business. It's voyage business from Australia or from uh, the USA into Europe or China. Um, but this is the, probably the way things are going to move forward um, in the next few years. Um, for time charter business, it's still done in the uh, more uh, old-fashioned sense through telephone and computer systems. Um, we do have new st startups, uh, Chinsei, for example, with Charter Party <coughs> Management. Uh, I believe it was only announced on Monday that the Baltic Exchange and Chinsei are going to try and come up with some new platform for Charter Party systems and to try and make fixture notes uh, a, a bit easier for the marketplace. Um, especially in Dry Bolt, where we have many different um, uh, Charter Parties. Uh, we negotiate every Charter Party and every fixture uh, every week, even with sometimes with the same people, so uh, it can. It, I think the industry can definitely uh, make its life a little bit easier. Um, I do feel uh, that though that many startups that uh, I get introduced to or I meet in London or in Greece or even uh, anywhere else around the world, sometimes they do try to push things a bit too hard and and. Uh, they, they're trying to be one step ahead of the uh, marketplace, and sometimes the market won't accept what they're trying to do. Um, moving into the actual trading space, and some people have hit about the algorithmic trading systems out there. Um, one company which I met in America recently was uh, Cargo Metrics. It's a really interesting um, trading model, uh, use a hedge fund basically using a AIS and other um, uh, shipping technologies to try and uh, find out the, basically the supply and demand for commodities around the world. Um, this, is, uh, this type of system is being uh, set up by uh, trading companies as well to try and uh, 
basically model shipping. It's a hugely complicated business because obviously um, you're dealing with the globe and the uh, movement of ships and uh, cargoes, and of course prices and uh, the, the movement of this. Um, moving forward, uh, we're obviously we could talk about blockchain, we could talk about uh, uh, quite in-depth systems. I think on dry bulk we're still quite a far away uh, uh, from this. Cargill recently did a blockchain type deal, but it was very simplistic and, and to be honest I think this type of structure is more relevant for containerization. Um, of course, it will it will help our business. Mr. Nixon, Nixon, you have one more minute. Thanks. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, going forward, uh, we have large charters and large ship owners working together. Um, due to the huge capital costs and regulator issues, they uh, are making shipping um, a difficult industry to make a decent return. So they'll, they'll uh, work uh, in, in trying to make their costs uh, lower and to be more efficient. Change is coming. Uh, for shipping. Um, the future is bright for those who want to evolve and uh, hopefully uh, things will, be, um, will make our lives easier in our day-to-day -day jobs. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nixon.